Running shoes today are all getting pretty good and all the main players in the game are creating really top tier shoes but they're all following a very similar trend with very similar technology in them. But you may remember a while ago Adidas dabbled in their 4D technology and today we're having a look at the Adidas 4D forward with after lots of hours and many 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 prototypes which we'll talk about later they've come up with this shoe and as you can see it's pretty different to anything that we've seen before. So let's jump in and have a look and see what's so different about the 4D forward. So usually with a shoe review we'd start from top to bottom but let's face it we're all here to know more about that 4D midsole so let's start with that today. So before we get into all the nitty gritty and all the tech and how it was made and why it looks like how it looks, the main concept for the 4D forward is the fact that this midsole is going to allow the runner to get more forward momentum as opposed to all those classic foams that we're all used to that give you a vertical cushion more so, less than a forward propulsion cushion if that makes sense. So that's the concept behind why 4D is here. And once you think about it like that, it's quite easy to see that when you look at this lattice system that they've made here, you can imagine that when you impact the ground, you're gonna have that forward and backward lateral movement that's gonna allow you to maintain that forward momentum and move it forward into your run, basically keeping your run more responsive and keeping that comfort level up as well. Although it's designed to help all runners out there, it's primarily designed to help out the bigger heel strikers of us. So if you're a big heel striker, this could be a really good shoe to have a look at. So when testing shoes, it's really hard to actually put a percentage on things and it's all done more on feel, which we're all well aware of. But when running in these shoes, they do feel super cushioned. And Adidas say that it offers 23% more cushioning. But what's even more interesting is that Adidas say that this new 4D midsole offers three times more forward propulsion energy than what we got out of the original 4D1 that they made. So huge improvements on the lattice construction there. So basically this final lattice design was one of five million that they originally started with. But those five million variations weren't actually made, they were just CGI variations. And they scaled that down quite quickly with computer testing, God knows how they do all that, but they quickly scaled that down to 10,000. And then they picked the best 25 out of that bunch, which they produced and tested over and over again with multiple different athletes through and through to get to this final lattice construction that we've got here. So with all that said, I think the 4D midsole in this could actually be a new chapter in running midsoles, and I'll tell you why. So this started with five million different variants, and they came down with this final variant here. But imagine if you could get your running gait analyzed specifically for you, so they could create the perfect midsole exactly for you. So it would be a custom 3D printed insole that would be made online, in store, wherever it might be. Custom stack heights, custom widths, custom shapes, custom lattice designs to make it more responsive in certain areas. Like all of this could be made in front of your eyes. And then if they had a whole selection of uppers, and let's face it, this upper's basically just your standard Addy upper that we'll have a look at in a minute, but they could just weld that onto this and you could have your own custom shoe made for you in the same day. Like. It's a crazy thought, but I think we're almost there. If I'm not explaining any of this well enough, which I'm sure I'm probably not, or you've got any questions to do with anything to do with the shoe, drop them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them. Or if you want to have a look at the product description, the colorways, or you want to buy the shoes, click on the link up there and you'll be able to do it all there. So speaking of stack height, this has got a 32 and a half mil heel stack with a whopping 11 and a half drop. And that drop is there obviously for the design of the shoe and that drop is gonna help with that whole forward motion that you have with the shoe. So it seems big, but it's all in the design of the shoe. Although it's like nothing I've ever run in before, the easiest way I could explain how this forward motion feels is, is like you're running on a big sort of rocker and it's really, it kind of rolls you forward. It's the sort of feeling of just being pushed forward. And I guess that's just the easiest way I could explain how it makes the run feel basically. I've not got the chance to run anywhere near the amount that I'd like to in my set, but Adidas state that a 4D midsole lasts just as long as a classic midsole. So it's nice to know that if you buy these, they're basically not just gonna fall apart quicker than they would do on a normal shoe, basically. So a nice touch. So that's the 4D midsole covered, probably been rattling on about that for more than you wanted to hear, but either way, it's quite exciting stuff. So you're fully aware of what it is now. So for the racers and marathon runners of you out there, I don't think this is gonna quite make a race day shoe, 
just because it is slightly heavier than probably what you'd want to use for a shoe like that, as well as it's still not being a super responsive fast shoe, but it's going to make for a perfect everyday trainer for everything from your, your casual, more casual pace, five to 10K sort of runs, this is going to be ideal for. And if any of you guys at home have used this shoe or tested it, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments because I can get a much more well-rounded picture of what you guys think to these shoes and it helps you make these videos. So the more feedback I get on what you guys think to the shoe in the comments, the better. If you're looking at buying a set of Adidas shoes for running in primarily and you're not buying these just for the aesthetic and lifestyle use, which I can completely understand why you would, these are going to stack up to basically being a slightly more serious running shoe than the Ultra Boost 21s, but definitely slightly less serious than if you're going to buy a set of Adi Zero. So if you're the sort of runner that's just going to log in 5, 10, 15k of running a week, then this is probably going to be an ideal sort of shoe for you to be looking at. So moving up to the upper, it comes with the Adidas PrimeNet Plus upper. It's an upper that we're already used to seeing in Adidas shoes and to be fair to it, it's a really nice upper and there isn't much need for change to it, so that's what we've got here. It's obviously super breathable and comes with that nice sort of mid stretch to it, so it gives you that really good support and hold in your foot when you're running in it. And in the 4D4, we see it in the whole one piece sock like upper, so I'm a huge fan of this. It creates a real lack of pressure points. It gives you that really sock like fit, super comfortable, as well as giving you that real good foothold when you're in the shoe. So for me, a huge bonus there. And I'd say the shoe generally fits as a whole a tiny, tiny bit larger than what I'd expect with a usual Addy shoe. So you might find that you want to go down half the size with this shoe. The toe box actually feels quite wide for an Addy shoe too. And although when you look at it from the top profile, it looks really quite wide because you've got this 4D midsole poking out the side here. But when you even cover that up, it's still quite a wide toe box for an Addy shoe. And I've got quite wide feet and just generally the shoe feels quite roomy, which is perfect for my feet. But as I say, if you're, if you're, running, if you're running narrow feet, if you've got narrow feet, you might want to size down that half a size just for a tighter fit basically. The upper is made of prominent green and I love that about Adidas and I love the way such a big brand are pushing sustainability and I like the way they're the forefront of that and I think a lot of other big brands should jump on that train and do the same. And if you don't know what it is, it's basically that I think about 50% of the upper material is made from non-virgin plastics basically. So the upper is made of 50% recycled material is the fundamental of it. I know it's still far from the whole shoe being made of 100% recycled plastics, but it's a real push in the right direction. Good work, Adidas. It's got a pretty standard lace system on the top with these sort of row pilots. You've got one, two, three, four, five down either side. But one thing you might consider is the fact that it looks like this prime net upper runs along, well, it does run along the whole side of the shoe, but you might think that there's no cage to that and then that it's super flexible. But if you actually feel the inside of the shoe, you've got a bit more of a more sturdy, thicker knit in there around this cage of the shoe. So some of these shoes, the laces don't really make much difference. They're just there for a visual purpose. But on here, you do sort of have an invisible cage running through. So if you did want to tighten up those laces, it will make a difference to how the shoe feels on foot. So moving underneath the laces, you've got that tongue and that is obviously part of that one piece upper. So it doesn't need any gaiters or anything. It is its own gaiter in its own right. And You've got no padding under that tongue because this prime net has got that nice give and stretch to it. So there's actually a very minimal set of padding in the whole shoe, but because the net's got so much give to it, it doesn't need to be padded. It's, it's, it's a comfortable shoe to wear. Then we'll move to the back of the shoe and we'll look at the heel counter. And as you can tell straight away, there really isn't much of a heel counter there at all. Super, well, there's a little bit of a heel counter at the bottom just for a bit of support, but it stops basically just halfway up this, this heel here. And that really goes along with the fact that this shoe is just designed to be super comfortable. It's gonna be a really good everyday trainer as opposed to that race day shoe. So that all makes sense with the design of the shoe. And like I said before, the whole shoe is basically padding and cushionless apart from these two tiny pads that you've got just at the upper of the heel here. And they're gonna be there more for heel support and to keep your heel locked in as opposed for comfort. Moving to the bottom of the shoe, we've got a completely rubberized outsole covering the whole of that 4D midsole. I'm presuming because that works in complete harmony with the midsole and if you started creating cutouts, it would really affect the way that that midsole worked. And I mean, on that subject, this isn't gonna be an out and out trail shoe by any means and I don't, well, I can't really see it being a problem, but have you ever had any gravel or any muck, anything caught in that 4D midsole? Is that ever gonna be a problem? 
I mean, I can't imagine it's going to be, but if you've had a problem with it, let us know, because I'd love to know. Anyway, back to the outsole, you can see that it's got a fully multi-directional sort of lug pattern down there that's primarily going to be used on road, but the lugs are actually deeper than you might think, so it's going to probably deal with some very light, very light off-road traily sort of maybe gravel tracks around town and stuff like that. So on that subject, maybe it will need a rubberized protection to cover the 4D lattice, or would that just ruin the aesthetic of it? I really don't know. So if you do know, let us know. And another thing you'll notice is it's a super thin layer, so that's going to allow that 4D lattice and you can feel it even with your fingers to really mold and manipulate to whatever you're running over. So you get a really good ground contact grip and feel from the midsole to the outsole, which is I think one of the best things about the shoe actually is that you get a really good running feel of what you're running on. And it just feels quite different to what you do when you run on foam basically. So you've got to try it to sort of experience that. So what do you think to the Adidas 4D Forward? It's obviously a very different shoe pushing into the realm of uncharted territory shall we say so a really interesting shoe looks interesting i can't help but love the look of it but what do you think as always thanks so much for watching if you like the video and want to see more like it consider subscribing thanks for watching and i'll see you next time